Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel, What Does This Data Say? I am Ajay Prakash. Tonight we are going to talk about one of the most explosive questions in South Asia right now. Has India really stopped the Indus waters flowing into Pakistan? After the tragic Pahalgam terror attack on 22nd April 2025, India made a dramatic announcement. The Indus Water Treaty of 1960 had been placed in abeyance with immediate effect. This was publicly articulated a day later through high-level statements following the government security review. In the political atmosphere that followed, several leaders declared that not a drop of water will go to Pakistan and that the treaty may never be restored. This narrative traveled far and fast on TV, social media and in political speeches, creating the impression that India had finally found a decisive tool of retaliation. Photographs of the Baglihar Dam on River China were shown in the media as a proof of India having stopped the Chinab waters. What it later turned out was, India had carried out an untimely dam flushing exercise which temporarily halted the water flow. The Hindu had a story on this on May 6, 2025. But as always on this channel, we separate truth from the myth. And the truth is, India does not currently have the physical, engineering or hydrological capacity to stop the Indus waters from flowing into Pakistan. Well, not today. The suspension is politically dramatic, yes, but technically the impact is extremely limited. Let's understand why. So what does the treaty in abeyance actually mean? The 1960 Indus Water Treaty divides the rivers of the Indus Basin into two groups. Eastern rivers, Ravi, Bias, Satluj, allocated to India and the western rivers of Indus, Jhelum, Chenab allocated largely for Pakistan's unrestricted use. When India placed the treaty in abeyance, it did not automatically or mechanically stop the flow of these western rivers. What it did do was suspend data sharing, joint inspection, hydrological notification and other cooperative mechanisms. This has enormous political symbolism and sends a powerful message. But suspending cooperation is very different from physically diverting or stopping river water. This is the crucial difference the public debate has ignored. In order to understand the magnitude and scale of the issue at hand, let us review how India harnessed the water of Ravi, Bias and Satluj, the three Indian rivers. First, the Ranjit Sagar Dam over the river Ravi in Himachal Pradesh. The Ranjit Sagar Dam was built from 1981 and completed in March 2001. The dam has a gross storage of 1.25 billion meter cube and an active storage of about 0.9 billion meter cube. The length or extent of this reservoir is about 15 to 16 kilometers. Coming to River Bias, it has two storage dams, the Pong or the Maharana Pratap Sagar as it is called now and the Pando dams. Maharana Pratap Sagar Dam has a gross storage of 8.57 billion meter cube and an active storage of about 7.29 billion meter cube. The length of the dam is about 35 to 36 kilometers. The Pong Dam was built between 1961 and 1974 with its official opening date being 1974. Pando storage by comparison is insignificant. The largest of the three reservoirs is the Guru Gobind Sagar Reservoir of the Bhakra Dam. The Guru Gobind Sagar has a gross storage of 9.6 billion meter cube 
and an active storage of about 7.5 billion meter cube of water. The length of the reservoir is more than 36 kilometers. The construction of the dam officially began in 1948 and completed by 1963. So the total storage capacity on Ravi, Bias and Satluj is about 20 billion meter cube and the active storage is about 16 billion meter cube. Now to understand whether India can stop the water, we must examine India's actual hydropower assets on the western rivers. These are the only physical points where flow can be modulated. Let's go river by river. Let's talk about Chinab, a big name but small in storage. India's major hydropower stations on Chinab are Salal, 690 megawatt of electricity is generated here. It was commissioned between 1987 and 1995. It is a run of the river facility, which means that we just generate power but do not store any water. The active storage here is minimal around 12 million meter cube. Then Dalhasti, 390 megawatt power comes from this uh, facility, commissioned in 2007. It's again run of the river, no significant reservoir. Then the Baglihar, 900 megawatt of electricity is generated, commissioned in 2008-9 for stage 1 and 2010 for stage 2. Run of the river with slightly larger pondage. The active storage here is around 32.6 million meter cube. These three major Chanab plants together store around 44 to 45 million meter cubes of water, which translates into some other units, which is called the mini million acre feet to 0 0.36 million acre feet. That is less than, just understand, that is less than 0.03% of the western rivers total annual flow. Let that number sink in. Now let's come to Jhelum. Again, all facilities are run off the river. The key projects are OD1, 480 megawatts, commissioned in 1997, and OD2, 240 megawatts, commissioned in 2013-14. Then lower Jhelum, commissioned in 78-79, 105 megawatt plant is here and Kishan Ganga, 330 megawatt electricity comes from here commissioned in 2018, run off the river with a tiny storage of just 7.5 million meter cube. Again, there is its negligible storage on the river Jhelum. And lastly, I talk about the Indus. The first facility here is Nimu Basgo, 45 megawatt of power is generated. It was commissioned in 2014. It's a run of the river facility. And then there are minor facilities like Chutak, which generates 44 megawatt, again a run of the river facility and no minimal bondage. To understand whether India can turn off Pakistan's water, we need to compare the available storage with the total river flow. The three western rivers, Indus, Jhelum, Chinab together deliver 135 to 136 million acre feet of water to Pakistan annually. Add up all the Indian reservoirs on these rivers, Salal, Baglihar, Krishan Ganga, all the others negligible ones, the total we get is 0 0.04 million acres feet. That is around 0.3% of the annual flow. India today's independent analysis based on open source dam data comes to a similar conclusion. The entire reservoir system in JNK can store only about 0.4% of the yearly flow as on date. Even if we take the higher estimate 0.4%, this is still less than 
वन परसेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान एनुअल वॉटर सप्लाई सो वॉट इज नीडेड टू एक्चुअली स्टॉप द वॉटर Hydrological experts quoted in India today point out to meaningfully hold back Pakistan's water India would need at least 22 dams of the size of Bhakra Nangal such a storage does not exist not even what one such mega storage dam exists on the western river and looking at the storage requirement you may well judge the ferocity and the capacity of the western rivers why can't india simply build more storage because firstly the terrain western rivers flow through steep narrow himalayan valleys unsuitable for huge reservoirs multiple expert assessments cited in media explain there are no known suitable places for bhakra scale storage in these valleys second is the silt chenab and jhelum are extremely silt heavy large storages would fill rapidly third it's a earthquake zone the region is seismically active and fourth land and displacement massive project would drown valleys towns infrastructure which is politically impossible and lastly decades of construction even if approved these dams would take 10 to 20 years minimum to be developed so even in the long term full stoppage is technically unachievable so what does india suspension actually achieve the suspension of the indus water treaty achieves mainly three things all political not hydrological firstly it ends data sharing india no longer shares daily flow data flood warnings gate operations info or project details with pakistan this raises uncertainty and stress for pakistan second it halts joint mechanism the permanent indus commission inspections annual meetings expert access are all frozen this removes institutional transparency and third it creates strong political signaling statements such as not a drop of water and the treaty will never be restored create psychological pressure but none of these actions stop the physical flow of the indus jhelum or chenab while india cannot eliminate the flow it can cause short term disturbances gate closures for a few hours this can cause temporary surge upstream temporary drop downstream minor short term shortages or flooding and uh, second is silt flushing without notice after suspension india conducted at least one desilt flushing operation without prior notification these actions irritate pakistan and show a willingness to use water as leverage but they do not and cannot stop the rivers so what is the future scenario what if all under construction projects finish india is currently constructing several basin projects in the chenab river pakul dul 1000 megawatt the only true storage project with 0.1 million acre feet capacity zatel 850 megawatt kiru 620 megawatt and then quar and savalkot have got environmental clearance in 2025 if all of these are completed india's total storage may reach 2% of the annual western river flow this will allow timing manipulation in winter it will not allow a complete stoppage however even with every project built india would remain far from the 22 bhakra size dams required for true control so the core question remains can india stop water to pakistan let's answer this clearly and factually first legally suspending the treaty does not delete international obligation international law and world bank still recognize the treaty 
complete stoppage would trigger massive global backlash. Technically, no India lacks infrastructure, storage, and diversion capability. Hydrologically, no. These are snow-fed, gravity-driven rivers flowing through India before entering Pakistan. Without huge storage, they will continue to flow. And politically, well, India can use water as a psychological and diplomatic tool, and it is doing so. And practically, India cannot turn off the tap, not today, not with the current project, not even with the next wave of under construction dams. So now let's conclude with the core message of this episode. The myth, India has stopped Pakistan's water after Pahalgaon. The truth is, India suspended the treaty in anger and as a political signal, but 99% of Pakistan's water is still flowing because India's hydropower projects are run off the river with virtually no storage. Experts estimate India would need 22 Bhakra Nangal size dams to truly cut the flows, but India currently has none on the western rivers. India can cause temporary disruption, operational surprises, and political shockwaves. But India cannot cut off the Indus, the Jhelum or the Chinab with its present infrastructure. This is the data, this is the engineering reality and this is the truth. Thank you for watching. I am Ajay Prakash.